Hello, Farouk here at directhub.net, the direct hub for all your FE exam needs. So the direct hub platform is designed to help you build the right mindset. So you wanna initially and slowly build the right mindset, get back to that steady mode and build the right steady structure, the right steady plan for something like the FE. Then from there, you wanna make sure you're learning the right skills. So the skills to tackle FE type practice questions, the techniques, the tools, the tricks to tackle these FE type practice questions. And lastly, you wanna make sure you're applying the right resources. So you have to use relevant resources Update it to the latest FE exam. So don't use outdated resources. Use resources that give you practice questions that replicate or mimic the FE exam as much as possible. And this is what we offer here at Direct Up. You want to build your mindset, have the right mindset for something like the FE and the steady mode for something like the FE. Then you want to develop the right skills. And lastly, you wanna make sure you're applying the right resources. And if you're focused within these three areas, you're absolutely guaranteeing that you can go in there and give this exam your best shot. And remember this, your best shot is all you need to pass this FE exam. Now let's talk about nominal versus effective interest rate. So I know for me, this was a confusing idea just to grasp over time when I was studying for the FE. In fact, in my entire engineering economics class, the nominal and effective interest rate. What does that mean? So, and also it's a common question I get asked by many students. What's the nominal rate? What is the effective interest rate? And this is what we're gonna try to answer in this conceptual type video. So first of all, let's define these. The nominal interest rate does not consider the compounding period. So compounding, think of it as getting interest on top of interest. For example, let's say you have a starting principal balance or a starting initial balance you're gonna get charged interest on that. And we know sometimes it's gonna compound the interest that's charged. And the frequency of compounding, is it going to be like daily? Is it monthly, yearly? So basically you're gonna get charged interest on top of interest. And that's what compounding means. And we're gonna discuss that as we proceed through a graph I have for us. So nominal interest rate, just remember, it does not consider compounding, the compounding period. Now, the effective interest rate does take into account the compounding period. So we do consider compounding for the effective interest rate. And therefore, it's going to be a more accurate measure of the interest that's charged. So effective interest rate is in fact the interest rate we always want to use for our analysis, for any problem statement we use. If, if you have to be careful, we'll talk about this, if we're focused on a yearly per period analysis. Let's say you're making yearly payments or maybe you're getting a net benefit yearly. Make sure to use the effective interest rate and take into account compounding, always. So effective interest rate is the rate we use in our analysis. Now, if a statement that says it's an interest rate of 10%, what does that mean? So interest rate of 10%, what do we mean by that? So what this means is it's going to be 10% per year and it's gonna be compounded annually. So even though it doesn't say compounded annually here, like it says just this part I'm focused on, interest rate of 10%, it doesn't specifically say compounded annually. You wanna always assume that it's just 10% per year compounded annually. In fact, it's just a nominal rate of 10%. So we know in this case that the nominal annual rate, interest rate is 10% and the effective annual interest rate is 10%. So what this means is they're both the same. So I nominal, I'll do NOM for nominal, is equal to I effective, which is just 10%. So we know in this case, it's just interest rate 10%. It's the nominal rate is the effective interest rate because it doesn't specifically say anything other than annually. In this case, it's like compounding annually. If it says monthly, yes, they're gonna defer. They're gonna be different. And we'll look at that as we proceed. So then we know if compounding is more frequent than once per year, the effective interest rate will be greater than 10%. And we'll see that through the examples below. So let's say if you have compounding monthly, daily, quarterly, semi-annually, the effective interest rate is always going to be bigger than the nominal interest rate of 
And then we know the more often compounding occurs, the higher the effective interest rate. So compounding, let's say daily, will give you a higher effective interest rate than compounding monthly. So that's what that part means. Now let's look at this graph. So what we have going on here is a 1000 initial balance, a principal balance, and it's a 20% annual interest. So now my question for you is, what is this called? That 20% is always our nominal. It's always like a nominal yearly rate that does not consider the compounding. So what we have here is a 20% nominal interest rate. So now what happens is wh what is going to happen to our balance over time, over the years, when we have compounding? Let's say we have monthly compounding, quarterly, or yearly. So the first thing I want you to remember is yearly is just the nominal, right? Because we know nominal is a yearly rate, interest rate. So yearly is not really compounding, even though if it says compounded yearly, it's not really compounding because it's just that nominal rate. So when you see yearly, just think it is the nominal rate. So the yearly is just we're getting 20% on top of the 1000. So you just take that 1000, you multiply by 20%. So I'm doing that in my calculator. So you get about $200 for that year. So you take 1000 plus 200, so we get 1200 at the end of the first year and we can actually verify that by the green line so just know the green here this green is for the yearly the yellow so the yellow line is for the quarterly and the monthly is going to be the small pink one the pink line there so we know that for the yearly we said we get about 1200 so we know 1000 here and after one year, so let me show you the x-axis. One year is going to be somewhere here. And we know after one year, we said we should get somewhere here, right? And it is indeed this one, right? This tick mark is going to be 1,200. That's just based on the yearly nominal rate. And we do that for the second year. So the previous balance that we're going to start with, let's say, is going to be 1,200 and then you add 20% on top of that. So you take 20% of 1,200, so 1,200 times 20%, you get 240, so you take 1,200 plus 240, so at year two, we're gonna get 1,440, and we should, we're focused on the green line there, we should get, get somewhere here, right, for the green yearly compounding frequency, which is just a nominal. So now what's interesting is what happens when it's quarterly and what happens when it's monthly where the compounding frequency changes, we're going to earn more because the more the compounding frequency increases, the higher the effective interest rate or the more interest that we're going to gain on top of interest. So compounding occurs more frequently and we can kind of see it through these steps, right? We have more steps that we take. So the monthly one has a lot more steps than this one compared to the yearly one. So now let's just pick a certain year where we want to check how much we've accumulated from the starting balance of 1000. And the one I'm going to pick is year six, just to show you. So what we do is go to year six and let's read off the value for yearly. So you go at the very peak there, you read off the value and we get about 300, sorry, $3,000. That assumes we're compounding yearly based on just the nominal rate of 20%. So now what happens when we have the, in this case, the next one is quarterly. The quarterly, you read off the same thing, but here we know we get about 3,200. So it's about 3,200 for the quarterly. Then the last one is going to be the monthly. So it's kind of hard to see, but it's going to be this one and it should be bigger than the quarter. And that one should be, let's say 3,400, 3,400 and something. So notice the pattern there. Yearly, you get the least amount. Then month, quarterly, you get a higher amount. And the greatest amount we get is when we have compounded monthly. That's if we're comparing just these three compounding frequency. And just note, monthly has more frequencies because you have 12 months in a year. 
quarterly, it's only four quarters in a year. So it makes sense that we're compounding at a greater frequency for monthly. Therefore, we should have that biggest balance at year six for the monthly compounding frequency. Now let's look at some examples that we may see in a problem statement on our FE. So we'll look at some sentences. It may say 12% compounded monthly, 10% compounded daily. What does that mean? So let's look at the first example. So we know what we have is 10% compounded monthly. So what you have to remember is that 10% is your nominal interest rate. So it doesn't have to say 10% per year. It does not have to say that. Just know the first number or the first percentage is the nominal interest rate. If it just shows the number by itself, it's always going to be a nominal interest rate per year. And we call that the R value, which is going to be 10% per year. And we also denote that as the annual percentage rate APR. So then we know it says compounded monthly. So the monthly period is going to be important. It's the frequency of compounding. And we know we denote that as the interest period. And you have to denote that as the M value. So M value, you might see as uppercase M or lowercase M, but M in this case is 12 months per year. So the big question that we should be asking ourselves is how many months are there in a year? How many months are there with respect to the nominal interest rate, which is going to be a yearly interest rate? How many months are there in, in a year? There's 12 months in a year. So the M value would be 12 months. So now, what does this mean with respect to the effective interest rate and something we denote as the interest rate per period? So now let's focus on the effective interest rate, which is the interest rate we always want to use if we're doing a period analysis of years. Always use the effective interest rate. So the effective interest rate equation is given. It's going to be in the FE handbook. But we, what we do for this is take 1 plus R, and we said R is going to be 10%. So what you do is put 10% per R, you divide by your M value. The M value we said is 12. So the M value is 12. You have to be careful. Monthly, there's 12 months in a year. So you put 12 on the bottom, raise it to the power of M, which is 12 again, minus 1. And we get the value for the actual effective interest rate per year for the entire year at the end of the year. So this is the interest rate that we actually get. And notice how it's bigger than the nominal rate. So it's about 10.47 compounded once per year. And what I want you to remember is the end value, anytime you're using those time value of money equations, when you're using the effective annual interest rate, I sub E, make sure the end value is in years, five years, 10 years, and so on. For effective interest rate, it must be in years, that N value, the period N value for those equations we use on their time value of money. Then we know there's the interest rate per period. So the interest rate per period is always just our R over M. In fact, it's going to be this portion, R over M, this one. So it's going to be I in green here. And what you do is take the R, the nominal rate, which is R of 10% per year. You divide by your M value, which is the 12 months per year and what happens is if you look the years actually cancel right the years cancel and you just get an i value and when you do the math you get about 0.833 percent that we get per month for the entire year or for 12 months so it's going to be 0.833 per month so that's what we the interest we're going to get charged on a monthly basis so we're going to get charged 0.833% per month. And the big thing you have to remember now is the N value. When you use those time value of money equations has to be in months. You cannot use the years because you're getting that interest per month. So you have to have a monthly, you have to convert, let's say five years to months. So five years to months, you just multiply by 12. So it's going to be 60 months for the N value you use if you are to use the interest rate per period. So be very careful and know the difference. Let's look at another example, example two. So now it's going to be 12%, in this case, compounded quarterly. So nominal rate, automatically, it's gonna be 12% per year. Then the interest period, the M value is going to be how much? 
So no, it's quarterly. How many quarters are there in a year? Four. So it's going to be four. The M value is four for four quarters in a year. Then what does this mean with respect to the effective and interest rate per period? So effective interest rate, you just use the equation like we did above. So what you do is put the 12% for R, for M you put four, four, and you solve, and you get about 12.55% as effective interest rate that's gonna be compounded once per year. It's the effective for that year. And remember, your N value in the equations has to be in years when you use I effective. So now the interest rate per period, it's gonna be the I value. We take R over M, so you take the 12%, we said the nominal rate, divided by the M value of four, then we get about 3% that we get per quarter. So now, note how this is quarterly, this has to be quarter, and the years here actually cancel, so it's gonna be 3% we get per quarter for the entire year, for 12 months. So just remember the N value, if you do an analysis using the, the interest rate per period, N value has to be in quarters. Then let's go on to the last example. So this one's interesting and a little tricky. So we know it says 3% interest per quarter compounded monthly. Okay, so if you compare it to the previous one or the one before that, it was just the percent by itself, right? And anytime we see that, always assume it's a nominal rate per year, unless they otherwise say otherwise, right? Unless they specify otherwise, in this case, they do, right? They specifically tell us it's 3% interest per quarter. So that's going to be the interest rate. And you can think of it as a nominal rate per quarter. It's no longer a nominal rate per year. But the way I like to do this is I always think of nominal rate as a yearly rate. I don't want to think about too much. I just want it to be a yearly rate. So what we can do actually is convert this 3% into a nominal interest rate per year, like we usually see it. And it's going to be simple. All you do is take 3% and we know it says per quarter, per quarter. And what you do after that is say, we know quarters there. The big question is how many quarters are there in a year? There's four quarters in one year. So we know that quarters cancel, three times four gives you 12%. So what this means is 12% per year. So what happens is what I did is take this 3% per quarter and I converted it to a nominal interest rate of 12% per year. And that's where we get that. That R value is a nominal interest rate yearly. So then it makes the work the same as we've done above. So what we do here, the monthly, we know M is gonna be 12 months per year. Notice year, year, they match, they have to match. So that matches 12 months per year. Then we know what does this mean? Effective interest rate, you just use the equation. We take 12% divided by 12, raise it to the 12. We get I effective, and that's gonna be 12.68 compounded once per year. And remember, N is in years. And the interest rate per period, R over M, we take the 12%, the nominal rate, divided by the 12 months per year for the M value that we denoted there. And we get an I value of 1% per month for 12 months. Thank you for sticking with me throughout this whole video and I hope it cleared up any confusion you might have had when you're looking at that nominal rate, the effective rate, or the interest rate per period. So I'll just leave it at that and I'll see you in the next video.